There we go. Okay, can you hear me okay, Lindsay? Yes, indeed. Great, good, I can hear you fine. Good. Um, well, uh, uh, I wanted to talk uh, a little bit, I'm not sure how much time you have, about um, uh, Cape Bush in particular, but also about uh, uh, career and stuff like that and uh, things that you've done, because uh, I, I'm uh, deeply fascinated and always have been. Um, way back from when in the past, actually. Um, uh, I'll tell you this, is a friend of mine many years ago who did an interview with you for an Oxford magazine. It was in about 1980 called Mandrake. And uh, yes. and uh, uh, I love that interview. It got a bit in that about being drunk. You, you, I, I know you've said similar things before, but about being drunk on it, it's important that I think you, you're saying that like basically you should be, not be sort of sober. You should always be intoxicated and fascinated and passionate. Now I have a, a problem with this line. I, I hear you very badly. Could you maybe ring me back? Um, I could try. Or is this better? if I come closer to the speaker? Oh, sorry, it's very, you're very blurred. Very blurred. I'll try calling back, Lindsay, OK? Maybe I, back maybe on. I could give you another number. Maybe I could give you my mobile, it might be better. Um, landline should be good. Let me try calling back on this one first. OK, it's yeah. just a bit muffled. OK, sure thing. I'll just come straight back on, yeah? OK, oh, thanks. goodbye. Hello, Lindsay, it's Mark again here. Is that any better for you? Yes, a little bit, anyway. A, a little bit. Well, let's see how we go. I'm sorry about that, but um, there we go. Oh, okay. Okay. Sometimes it's like that. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Anyway, so uh, you uh, were quoting uh, something I said about drunk. Yeah, yeah, from Mandrake. Uh, you, you, you must be drunk on something. Drunk on wine, drunk on perfume, you said. Drunk on beauty. I love that quote. Oh, I was quoting Baudelaire. Ah, uh, of, of Baudelaire called uh, Get Get Drunk. I really meant the important thing is to be intoxicated, to be in 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 a, in a trance. Uh, yes. At that time, I used to drink alcohol to help me get through performances <laughs> and help me to realise I saw the the characters that I was to play. Yes, uh, uh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> and now I I kind of do it on me. Uh, I find myself intoxicated, but on the role and on the preparation for the role, which is my uh, my trance. But I find a way of getting into the essential trance. Yes. Uh, with, without uh, without alcohol, but with with, mm. with poetry, as Baudelaire also said. I shall look that up, you know, because I, I liked it so much that many years ago I started to write a novel which was never finished, and I wanted to title it Drunk on Virtue, which was one of the... the oh, yeah, well, the, that one must have always been drunk on wine, on poetry, on virtue, yes. uh, as you will, but be, but always be drunk. Well, it's, it's Baudelaire, it's a prose poem of uh, Baudelaire called uh, Get Drunk. Oh, well, there we go. Uh, and uh, and yes. at that time, I used to do quite a lot of talks and lectures and things, and I always used to begin uh, by by reciting that poem. But I was always pissed <laughs> in those days. I took I, I took his get drunk a bit too literally. <laughs> well, there we go. Yeah. Well, the, the, with this move, we'll circle back. But um, for uh, the, the reason why I got the interview was partly to be talking about um, Kate Bush. So, sh shall we do some of that? Then uh, uh, I know you've said it many times, but uh, if you could bear to repeat how you met up with Kate Bush, I think it was at the Roundhouse. But please, t please do uh, tell me. No. Um Kate, okay. uh, I first met Kate at the Dam Center. Okay. She, she, had, she had seen a, a production of mine, The Flowers, which yeah. everyone during that period had been to see. Uh, Flowers, which was based on Jean Genet's novel, Our Lady of the Flowers. Hmm. 
Okay. So, uh, she, she, she saw that show, and uh, and she heard that I was teaching uh, at the dance centre in Covent Garden. I see. One day she came along, following the footsteps, needless to say, many other pop singers, uh, mm. namely David Bowie. Yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, and uh, I remember walking into the studio. The studio was very full of, of, of students at the time, you know, and she arrived uh, very timidly, and, and she took a, a place at the, at the back of the class. Yeah. And uh, I, I encouraged her, I had to encourage her to move a bit further forward where I could see her. <laughs> I mean, she was a, 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 a attractive, but uh, extremely timid. It was only mm. when I started playing the music and she started to move, then, uh, then she lost herself, she lost her timidity. And uh, and the time she became, I mean, quite wild. She was quite quite the wild thing in those classes, excelling yes. in, um, in in the uh, in the improvisations. Yes, yes, I see. Right, so uh, she drew your attention there. But uh, then she was, uh, uh, again, this is from another interview, but something about she was volunteering uh, free of charge to do costumes for you? Um, oh, at the help? time, uh, when, she, um, when, she, when she started doing classes with me, when she was doing the dance and the classes, I had um, uh, a season at the Roundhouse. Ah, that's, that's, yes, that's where I came in, yeah, yeah, in one or two other things, and uh, and one day I went into the theatre and I was surprised, pleased to see that she was uh, lending a hand in the um, in the in the wardrobe, helping kind of patch up a uh, rather tattered costume. Yes, yes. But I had no idea that that uh, you know that uh, she was uh, you know banned for a singing career. I mean, I really. Don't. I hardly spoke to her. I mean, after class, she was always always collected. I remember. Uh, I didn't know at the time that that uh, her, her management, I mean, the record company, were actually paying for her classes and uh, and and for her transport. Yes. And uh, it, it came as a very big surprise when one evening I got back home uh, in in Battersea, and, and under the door she slipped uh, an LP, which was called uh oh what was it called? The Kate Inside, the something inside. What was that? Well, there was a, the Kick Inside, so perhaps it was that one. That's um, that was one of the early ones. Yes. What? The Kick Inside. Perhaps it was that one. The Kick Inside, and uh, on that record, you probably know this. You read it that uh, yeah. there was a, a, a song called uh, Moving, which he dedicated to me. That's really nice, isn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah, it's a lovely song, and I, uh, I, I was also very moved uh, by it, and, and, and surprised because I didn't even know that uh, she had aspirations to being a singer. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I, that came as a, a, a surprise. Yeah. And so she became a regular student, and uh, she saw every performance, night after night, she was at the theatre, I mean, you know, helping out backstage, and the wardrobe and, uh, and and also watching performances yes. and therefore gleaning a lot about my kind of work and um, and aesthetic and, and style and so on and and continued uh, with my classes until I uh, eventually left England and then I didn't see her for a while but then mm. sometimes when I was abroad she'd appear I mean I was doing a performance in Toronto and there was a knock at the the door and and there she was. Hi, didn't see. Brilliant to see you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we, we we kept in touch over the years, yeah. and, um, and and then um, 
she asked me if I would be interested in working with her on the line and the cross and the curb. Of course, mm. that was many years after, you know, we, we first met. Yes, yes. And, I mean, she knew, obviously, that I, I would enjoy this collaboration. Firstly, because it, it was very much inspired by my very favorite film and the film which, uh, which changed my life, which made me all the more determined to be to go on the stage and follow a career as a dancer. Right, this is the Red Shoes, yes? Red Shoes, yes. yes. And she also had this passion for the Red Shoes. Yes, it was the title of one of her records, wasn't it? Uh, which relates to the film, yes, yes. Um, well, that's right. Well, the, the, the video was actually was, was called The Line Across the Curb, or The Red Shoes, I think. Yes. Um, but it was very much uh, inspired, in, influenced by, by the film The Red Shoes, that marvellous film. And uh, she'd also met Michael Powell, the great director who directed that film, you know, my idol. I never met him. She did, you know. And she got quite a lot of advice from him about the making of, uh, of The Line, The Cross and The Curve. And I, and, I, and I got to play a role based on the shoemaker in the film, which was, which was played by uh, the, uh, the Russian dancer Leonid Massin, who was my hero. Wow. I mean, from being a boy at school. And I mean, I knew the original steps. I mean, I learned them from the film. I mean, you know, I danced that role again and again in my mother's mm. front room, you know, with my carpet slippers. da 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 the music was uh, marvelous and so on. Easedale, his mother's composer, wrote the yeah. music. Yeah. And, uh, and so, of course, I, I was absolutely uh, thrilled. Mm, but yeah. she asked me if, if I might be interested in doing that, and uh, and of course I also have to repeat with the uh, the mise en scène when I arrived for the first re for the first meeting, she was uh, staggering around on point, you know, in a pair of red toe shoes, which I really advised her against doing. <laughs> she wanted to dance on her toes, but it can be dangerous, you know. I mean, without the proper training and. Uh, uh, and I suggested that maybe my friend Lucy Burge, who was, who was a, a ballerina with my company and had been a, a leading dancer with the ballet run there. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and help her, certainly, with, with the choreography, which she did. And, uh, and also with, um, w w with, um, with Kate's dancing and be a double for the, her double for the, for the toe, for the, for the feet. So she was Kate's uh, foot double, which I think nobody knows about. Yes. So uh, yes. The, whenever you see Kate on the point, uh, it, it's, it's Lucy, Lucy Burge's feet. And at the end of the film, when you see those red toes just kicking away, that, that was uh, uh, Lucy buried under a pile of garbage with only her, her, her feet uh, sticking out. <laughs> oh, wow. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, because I need to mention in the Art Info piece something about Guido's photographs. I was going to ask you briefly about those. Um, there is a lovely picture of you behind Kate. She's, she's having a sleep with like a herring oh, curlers. favorite picture. That's yeah, I came in to picture. say it's a wrap. <laughs> I was only too happy, jumping in the air. She was having a snooze. Oh, you know that picture. That's my favorite. Yes, yes, I, I'm going to be using that picture. Yes, I know, shouting, it's a wrap, or, or the, the bar's open, I think. <laughs> yeah, the bar's open. Yippee! <laughs> uh, I, and uh, that remarkable photographer, Guido, I mean, cap captured that moment. Yes. I, I, I first met Guido in the 70s you know, um, when he came to see several performances of mine when I was uh, touring Italy. Oh, yes. At stage one night, I think about 1978, in mm. Milan, and requested that he, took, uh, that he could take a picture of me in the dressing room. And that led, you know, to him actually following the company for a very long time. I mean, he was always there, you know, taking pictures on stage and then back. Stage, the 
backstage pictures were particularly splendid because he really caught, you know, the, 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 the magic and sometimes somewhat sordid world, you know, of, uh, of, of backstage. And then in 1982, uh, of course, he published the book. Yeah. Uh, um, with uh, his pictures and, and, uh, and the, the very splendid the biographical text by... Uh, David Horton. Have you got that book? I haven't actually, no. I shall look it out. Interesting. Ah, well, yes, it's a very good book. Uh, it's difficult to get hold of it, you know. Um, <laughs> I, I can try on Amazon or, or uh, Google or something. It's amazing what you can Amazon, get. Amazon, yes. Anyway, it, it's just it's called Lindsay uh, again by uh, Guido Harari and uh, David Horton. Yes. Yeah, uh, interesting. Yes, yeah. Did Did you see um, uh, any of Kate's shows that she had uh, a couple of years ago? It was like literally a couple of years ago now that she did uh, like this, those shows in London. No, I didn't. But can I just come back for a minute to this book? Yes, of course. Please uh, do. Yes, yes. Carry on. Sorry. Book, which I was absolutely delighted with, and um, and I, I I gave a copy to Kate uh, to Kate for present. You see. Ah. At yes. the moment she saw those pictures, she said, "Oh God, I want to be photographed like this." Who is Guido? You have to introduce me. Oh, I see. Yes, I I knew the connection. Uh, and was that familiar. was the start of that kind of. Uh, relationship. Yes, yes. Okay. And, 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 you know, the, and his invitation to kind of, uh, you know, photograph the uh, the process of making the uh, the film, The Land Across the Curve. Yes, I see, right. That, that puts it together very well. Um, can you think of any, uh, obviously you've talked about uh, both Bowie and, and Kate many times, but is there any anecdote you can think of of, of, of either of them, for that matter, which maybe has not been said before or not been highlighted, something different. I would you mind repeating that? The, the slang is still not very good. Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll come closer to the microphone in hope. Um, I, I was wondering if you could think of any anecdote of either Kate or indeed David Bowie, which might not have been said before or not highlighted very much, something different. <laughs> it's a tough one. I thought I'd ask. Hard one. That's a hard one. I, I, I can't think of anything that I haven't <laughs> said already. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there we go. I, yeah, you know, the moment I put the phone down. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. Uh, yeah. I mean, to be quite honest, you know, that making something up, you know, I just can't think of anything that I haven't, like, said. Yes, yes. Okay, well, anyway, uh, I think I probably have enough on Kate, so um, uh, I wanted to talk about your career, if we've got time as well. I really, really hope we do. But uh, David Bowie, uh, 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 I was writing stuff earlier on this year. I met David a long time ago um, and so sorry to have his death but again um, uh, uh, how you came up to meet uh, with David uh, I know you've said it before but uh, anything like that would be uh, useful because it's, uh, uh, I know it's a fascinating story. Sorry, you mean how I met him? Yes, yes, simply, yeah. Right. Well, I, 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 I was um, I was being managed at the time, uh, not uh, by uh, by NEMS, by Epstein's uh, management. And, uh, and this was in the 60s, the 60s, 66, I think, 64, 65, I think about about then. Yeah. And uh, one day I went into the, the office, popped by the office just to see if there was any work. And uh, and the secretary, who of course I was, had become quite friendly with, uh, she said, oh God, you, you have to listen to this record. It's by this guy called David Bowie. He yeah. pops into the office from time to time and I think you love it. It is very, very you. Mm. And uh, she gave me that, that, that record. Uh, of course, it was the DRAM. It was his first album. Yes. And uh, yes. I, I mean, I was thrilled. I was, I was thrilled. I was so moved. I was in love. I fell in love. I was in love with the voice, you know, and the, and the songs and then the, the stories of the, of the songs. And um, 
I was performing in a little show in St. Martin's Lane at the time mm. called Clowns, and oh. there was one of the songs on the record that I particularly loved called uh, When I Live My Dream. And uh, I played that song before the show started. And one night, the uh, the secretary, the lady, brought David along. And uh, firstly, I mean, he was delighted to hear his song being uh, played. Yeah. And 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 also very uh, very moved, very yeah, very moved by the show, by its subject, by the by my world, the world of you know. The, Piero and Harlequin and backstage blood and tears and so on. Yeah. And he came backstage afterwards and asked if he, uh, if I could teach him, if he could study with me. And I, like I've said before many times, when I opened the door, you know, it was like the Archangel Gabriel <laughs> uh, standing in front of me. And I felt like uh, 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 that Mary. Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't fall on my knees until some time later, and uh, and he started um, he started doing classes with me at the dance centre, yeah. uh, where we were for quite a while. The first class, the students, I mean, m m much admired and desired, especially by the girls, especially during the improvisations and the contact improvisations, you know. Yeah. And uh, and I began to create a little show. Um, with David called uh, Piero and Turquoise. Yes. Turquoise, because it was the, the Buddhist symbol for everlastingness. And when I met David, he, he was thinking about ch chucking music altogether, and he wasn't getting anywhere. And, um, and he was planning on going up to... Um, to, to the border, to Scotland, uh, to join an order of Tibetan monks at the Sami Ling uh, Monastery. He'd been studying uh, Buddhism for, for quite a while, a couple of years, was quite serious about it. Yes. And uh, he thanks me, you know, for having uh, saved him from having his head shaved. <laughs> Very funny. I know he was working in an office or something at one stage, wasn't he? Was uh, we, we, we hit the road and, uh, and we went to the, the Mercury Theatre in, in, in not, not, Notting Hill for a season and then uh, the show came to an end and I didn't mm. see him for a while. We did a television show together, a play. And uh, and then a few years later, Angie Bowie, who I had met, came up to Edinburgh where I was living and performing with my company in the set production, Flowers. And she said that uh, David asked me to give you this record to listen to it. And mm -hmm. if you like it, you know, maybe you would be interested in, in devising a stage show. Uh, directing it, uh, devising, directing it, and perhaps uh, performing in it, and maybe uh, with, with your company also. Yes. Sometime later, we were, I went down to London, and uh, I, got, I loved the music. It was a, what was the record? Uh, Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust. Ziggy Stardust, yes, yes. And for, uh, for Tony De, Tony DePriest's office, for Tony and Angela and David, I, I, I danced and mimed the entire album, <laughs> uh, improvising, yeah. and uh, they were delighted, and we started rehearsals for that show uh, a couple of weeks later the yes so it's such a record uh, uh, I, I'm a rock critic as well as doing everything else I've listened to so many records and it's probably still in my top 10 favorites ever uh, Ziggy Stardust yes, from mine, beginning to end you know from uh, 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 the, the very beginning with five years right the way through to rock and roll suicide on the end oh god well they were all my numbers as well you know I danced and mind many of those songs of course yes. I was the I was the star man and I was queen bitch. queen bitch yes yes lady stardust I could see as well did you do that one that's it's, it's a lovely track well, Lady Stardust was beautiful. No, Lady Stardust was dedicated to Mark, Bo uh, Mark Bolan, and, and, and David wanted to project uh, Mark's uh, picture at that time. Ah. It was quite, uh, and I, uh, 
Yeah, that was the opening, Lady Stardust. But for that, I'm afraid I was like a statue in a in a in a in a in a, in a Lady Stardust mask together with my company, and we were all dotted around wearing Lady Stardust masks and various levels of uh, of scaffolding. Yes. 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 Lindsay, I want to uh, double back onto your uh, uh, very early life, and you'd mentioned about the red shoes. It seemed to me there was something a bit um, uh, Billy Elliot, like, you know, you wanted to do your dancing, but you were in an environment where people didn't think that boys should do this stuff. I wonder how you overcame this, how you came through it. I mean, I, I knew, I mean, you know, from a very early age that that's what I wanted to do. I mean, I've always known. Um, and, of course, my mother was delighted when I was a child that I was I was so popular with my little dancing escapades. <laughs> I was particularly keen on entertaining, not just dancing, but, you know, but en entertaining. And the neighbors were, were, were much entertained. Mm. But, but by the time I reached the age of about eight or nine years old, I mean, it had become an absolute, you know, ob obsession. I mean, I couldn't think about anything other than dancing. My yeah. mother had agreed, after much persuasion, uh, you know, to let me go to dancing classes, which I first attended at about the age of six years old. But by the time of, uh, of, of uh, eight, ten, nine, ten, yeah, she thought, well, you know, I, I didn't have a father. My father was killed during the uh, first two years of the war when his, when his ship was torpedoed. Yes. Navy, who was a sailor, and my mother always hoped, you see, that I would follow in, in his footsteps. Even though she loved the theater and she loved dance, I mean, I mean she knew it was a very precarious profession, and, uh, and, 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 and like all wise parents do, you know, try to distract their, you know, child from having any such thoughts for fear, you know, that they, uh, you know, the, the profession is overcrowded, people are hungry, or one thing or another. And, and so I was packed off to boarding school where she hoped, you know, a lot of that would be knocked out of me and, and I would decide that as a nautical as a nautical college, you yeah. know, to follow in my father's footsteps after all, which uh, of course I didn't. I, uh, mm. I, I persisted and, and after school I, uh, I managed to get a scholarship to the uh, to Rumba, to the ballet, the ballet Rumba school. But yeah. once my mother, I have to say, once my mother realized not only that I was just so determined uh, to be what I wanted to be, uh, but also talented. Uh, that yeah. was another thing. I mean, once you realize that I had the talent and, 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 the, and, and the, the determination, and then she did everything she could to help, you know. I mean, she, she scrubbed floors and so on, you know, to help me through... Uh, to help me through my, uh, my, my, my training. Yeah. After run there, you know, I, I performed here, there, and everywhere in striptease clubs and circuses, uh, variety shows, and musicals, Oklahoma, and other touring musicals and reviews. And then, uh, uh, but, but always putting on, which I had from being a tiny child, little shows of my own with, 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 with friends. These little shows had begun mm. in my hometown of South Shields, you see, which is where uh, I. I was brought up until the age of 10. Yes, yes. And uh, these little shows just became bigger shows and little shows and they became professional shows and, yes. and, and so on. Yes. But, but um, my, my passion mm. for dance and the theatre has absolutely continued, never wavered my uh, desire to be what I've become, God knows, for better or, or for worse. Yes, yes. Did this pay the bills, all this stuff? It's, it, I mean, it's wonderful. It's, it's a wonderful dream, and we know how important that is for an artist, but I'm just wondering how it went. So it sounds like you know, some of these might be quite small. Please, I'm sorry. It, I was saying, did, did this pay the bills? Like, you know, um, uh, how did you manage financially? Was it, was it okay? Sorry, it's very blurred. I've only got your did. Uh, try again. Uh, did this pay the bills well, financially? Did it pay? Yeah. Yeah. What, you mean my years in the theatre? Yeah, financially. Yes, yes. I'm wondering how you got on. Well, uh, 
and then oh, now, well, now it's pretty much like then. Yeah. Oh, it was it was tough. <laughs> it was a struggle. I mean, I nearly starved. I, I, I spent many nights sleeping on railway stations, etc., etc. I mean, it was incredibly difficult. Wow. I mean, I had many jobs, you know. I mean, in restaurants and selling fruit, and 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 oh God, no, I can't begin to tell you the things that I did. Well, I wouldn't tell you some of the things I did. Uh, <laughs> so ju just to uh, just to eat, uh, it, it was extre extremely difficult. But of course, it prepared me, you know, for the you know the the, the regime, you know, the, the profession which was. Uh, which was to follow. I mean, I was warned at the beginning, you know, that I'd probably never have a pair of shoes to my feet or a roof over my head, but uh, fortunately I do have a few pairs of shoes and a, and a roof over this very lovely Italian house where I live in, uh, in Italy. Yes, yes. Uh, if you can hear me, I was saying that... Um... I never thought of the money. I mean, I, like many people nowadays, you know, it was very foolish. They think, oh, I'll go to the theatre, you know, I'll make money, and I'll go to Hollywood and we'll make money, and I'll be rich, and I'll be a celebrity, and, and one thing and another. I, I certainly I never thought about the, the money, and and I didn't think about fame either. I never thought about, you know, I didn't have the desire to be a star. I, I I just wanted to be on the stage, <laughs> you know, which was my and my world. Yes, yes. I was going to say, Lindsay, I'd, I'm trying I'm coming off hands free if that's any better. Um, the, the, can you hear me any better? Even though the theatre itself, that will be pretty cruel, but no. Mm. Yes, yes. Um, but you've always been able to live your dream, which is important for an artist. Uh, be able to live your dream? Well, absolutely, yes. That's well, not just for an artist, I mean, but for everybody, isn't it? <laughs> Actually, yes, yes, it's for everybody, <laughs> yes. Um, uh, I think that uh, those were some of the main things I was going to ask. Yes, yes. <laughs> Okay, good. Um, I was going to pass on regards from um, uh, someone you, you may know. She, she, she's Macho, with um, Emma Stace Darling, um, uh, who's an artist. Um, and we went actually to the Kate Bush concert a couple of years ago, and um, uh, she was mentioning your name then. And uh, she's actually living in Italy, uh, in Sardinia at the moment. Yes, so anyway, it, it's um, warm regards from Emma. Um, yeah, we even. T yes, yes. Um, but occasionally I. No. It was very spectacular. It was good. I believe. Yes. yes. I believe so. Yes. All right, Lindsay, I'm sorry this line has been bad for, for you. I've been oh, hearing you fine. Oh, um, but I'm really sorry for you. I mean, for me, my ear is really sore because I've got the um, pressed, really pressed out again because I've got a very red, kind of black kind of ear now. Oh, dear. Well, I'm hearing off. But, yeah, but, um, but, but lovely. I, I've got plenty there. I shall be along um, to the gallery, uh, the Guido's show, and uh, I, I will say hello then. Um, so I look forward to seeing you there. I look forward then. to that. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks so much. Um, have a good day. I hope your ear gets better. Right. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah. Thanks, Lindsay. All the best. Bye. 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 Bye.